Welcome to my lecture online. As the last video in this series, we want to take a look and see what some of the hmm, possible limitations and caution should be when we do linear regression. So let's take a look at some of those. And again, we'll take our data set that by now we're fairly familiar with, the number of push-ups related to the number of sit-ups. And you can see we found the best fit line. The equation of the best fit line was y equals 0.66x plus 15. So what do we do with this? Let's say we want to try to see how many sit-ups somebody can do when they can do 200 push-ups. So we'll let x equals 200, and the result of that came out to be 147 sit-ups. So does that seem reasonable? Another thing we have to be careful of is, let's say that if we then go back in the other direction, and let's say that there's somebody that can do zero push-ups, then our prediction is that they can do 15 sit-ups. And typically a person that is not capable of doing a single push-up may not be able to do very many sit-ups either. So maybe this doesn't predict some of the outlying areas that are not part of our data set. So the suggestion is that our linear regression is only valid for the data range, that we can only look for values in here, not for way out there and not for way over under the other direction. Also, we're not really told what the sample represents. It says students, but it didn't say if they were male students or female students, were they men or women? We don't know. Were there more men, more women, all men, all women, a mix? We don't know. And so if we have a combination of them, that also may throw out the relationship or throw off the relationship. And so we should be very careful what actually went into the data. So here again, I mentioned that if a person can do 200 push-ups, they can probably do a whole lot more than 147 sit-ups. So it doesn't appear like this linear regression is valid to a very great distance. Also, we may want to consider is that that relationship between push-up and sit-up is truly linear, or is it more of a curve like this? Maybe it's more of a quadratic equation, and we should be looking for a quadratic regression, not for a linear regression. And then finally, when I look at all these data points, there is one that kind of sticks out. In general, there's more push-ups than sit-ups. Uh, I should say another way around, less push-ups than sit-ups, except here there was a very big turnaround where there were way more push-ups than sit-ups. There were a couple more where just slightly more, so slightly more, slightly more, but this was a lot more, and that looks like kind of a, a not lying data point. So you can see it's right here on the graph. It's farthest removed from the line, and you wonder about that data point. Is that a valid data point? We don't know anything about what went into that data point. Maybe that person was having a bad day. Maybe that person didn't really try very hard on the sit-ups, but really could have done way more sit-ups. We don't know, and it does throw out our overall concept of what the proper correlation is, the proper regression between push-ups and sit-ups. So you can see that it's not as clear-cut. There's all kinds of questions that may come up when you're dealing with data and we're dealing with linear regression. But at least it gives us a good place to start. It does give us an equation based on the data given to us. And then we may ask some questions to see how valid and how accurate our data set actually is. And that's why I say it, always be careful about the limitations and the cautions of doing linear regression.